important piece that we use, that our customers use. So as I mentioned, we're going to tell you about the, where we've been, where we are, where we're headed, and a few other things. When uh, I got an email from, uh, I think from Neil, to, to send us an extended bio, not just the, the, the little one. So when I looked online here, it had the little one. I was like, oh, Neil, what happened to that? So well, before I asked Neil what happened to that, I better see if I sent it to him. And I, I, was, I was like so pleased once I, I, I written it up, sent it out to a couple people for review. They said, great. And I, I forgot to send it to Neil. But the reason I put this up here, I know there's a lot of people that are relatively new, young small talk programmers, which is fantastic to see. And I was in that spot some time ago. And back in the, back in the 80s, working for IBM for their, their, their future manufacturing floor control facilities were looking at all better ways of doing software. And I was looking at all kinds of neat things, like if you read uh, uh, John Bacchus' Touring Ward lecture with the programming language FPs, we were looking at neat things like that, all kinds of new, innovative things, and came across Smalltalk. And basically, Smalltalk was an object-oriented, were so profoundly better for doing software development, it was like, it was like love at first sight. It was, that's it. And basically, uh, I haven't looked back from that. It basically was such a market improvement in every way for doing software development. So it was really, really significant. So I wanted to put up that, that second sentence. And I think we forget, I mean, everybody knows here the, the history of small talk and you know, coming out of Xerox Park and all. But I think we often lose sight of the fact that you know, they had a decade to develop it. They had a lot of bright people. They had no product pressures. They got to develop stuff, throw it all away, and say, what did we learn from that? And start brand new and do that in several iterations. And what other technology really gets that kind of advantage? And even all the ancillary things all around Smalltalk have made such a profound impact on computing in general, things we take for granted today. So our products, our primary products, VisualWorks and Object Studio, are based on the Syncom, what we call the Syncom Small Talk Foundation. So basically, we have all our products use the foundation, and they use and exercise and improve the foundation. So and this is kind of the core, the core VM and library that came from you know, along with VisualWorks. It's now our, our foundation for our products. So we've had a number of releases, and so what kind of things are we doing in our products? We're doing things to move small talk forward. We're doing things to keep customers engaged. We're doing things that allow customers to expand and build new applications in new areas because of, of new things they've asked for and we're building into the products. And we're doing things to attract new customers, new blood, new people into small talk. Um, our small talk business, I mean, despite the economy, our small talk business is doing well. So we've had a lot of releases and things in, in, the, last, in the last couple of years. I think we've been more focused, and especially more customer focused. And you'll see a lot of these things that we've been doing over a while and things we're planning for the future are primarily customer focused. And in our idea, ideas for product improvements come from a number of areas. Community, customers, internally. But, you know, or, or I can sit down with engineering and debate. They, you know, some engineers have some good ideas for this stuff. And I say, well, what about this stuff? And we can debate priorities and importance on that stuff. But when I put something on the table and say, three customers say this is really important to them. There, there, there's no debate. Customers want this. But the only debate is how to best serve doing those things for our customers. So very, very customer focused on moving our things forward. So some of the things we've done in the past with our foundation, we moved to full Unicode support in our, in our Windows virtual machine. 
it was a joke. It was somebody, not our small hawk marketer, but well, somebody had sent out an email that we had, that they did a spell check without really you know, thinking about context, and they sent out that we had full unicorn support. Like I say, we're going after that tween, that, that tween uh, female growing market for, for new developers. Any way to get new small hawk that we're always looking for new ways. Um, store mentioned is our our source control, source code management system. And we had customers saying, hey, we rely on this. We need you to fix this, fix this, add this, add this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I went to engineering and said, okay, guys, what are we going to do? And they said, well, kind of what we have now, I mean, we can kind of make it in there, but it, it's going to be kind of a mess. So what are we going to do about this? So I said, uh, I'd like to... Um, Alan and I are engineering manager I work a lot with, but I like the way he said, he said he only changed three things about store. The front, the back, and the middle. And actually, that's exactly what we've done. So we have entirely revamped it to give it a solid foundation now to move forward and, and things, customizations are easier for our customers. Uh, new things that we want to do are far, far easier for us now with a solid foundation to move forward. So. That's an important piece that we have completely revamped. And uh, Tom, again, Tom is going to be telling you about that um, in more detail this afternoon. 64-bit work. We had come out some years ago with some 64-bit um, platforms, and they were a good start, but I mean, to, to be used for really serious work, they needed, they needed significant work. And we've had people uh, working on that, making very significant <coughs> improvements. Atomic loading, uh, atomic, that can mean things really small, it can mean big explosions, and in this case it means basically all at once. So we can atomically load things, which essentially loads a whole lot of code into a shadow area and then installs it in one fell swoop. And that gets around a whole lot of different categories of loading issues. Delays, we've had delays for, for decades actually. And they, they serve pretty well, but more recently they have started to um, have some issues for use in certain ways. So we came up with an alternative implementation that people could use. Um, so, so things like if the if the time if uh, we're the daylight savings time and the time change and there were long running delays, that could break the old ones. The new ones work with that, and they're more native platform based. And we're continuing to. To refine them. We had a number of improvements with our Mac machines and integrated a prerequisite engine that had been a goodie. We integrated that because it was very popular. We've introduced a, a new merge engine, uh, much, much faster based on some, some modern, uh, modern algorithms and techniques, pretty neat stuff. Uh, a new comparison tool to, to utilize that. Uh, you saw yesterday there were some GC improvements in the past, present, and future. Lot, lots of store-related improvements. Browsers are rebased now. Uh, Work-based store garbage collection you can do. All kinds of fixes and cleanup. With every release, we try to work in, and we do work in, the latest Seaside version for uh, use by our customers. Those are some things of the foundation of the recent past. What are we looking at for the future? Mark, we're going to tell you this afternoon, or remember his talk is about externalizing our encryption work, uh, store improvements for speed. Uh, one of the areas that we basically revitalize store is to, to move forward with adding configuration management. And of course, we'll get our, our the latest Seaside framework in at that time. I want to mention after after last year's ESO, the uh, engineering manager, Alan Knight, and myself, uh, we went on what I call the store tour. And we had a number of large customers in Europe who really pounded on store, and they, they wanted to talk to us. So we, uh, a week after ESO, we went through several countries in Europe and sat down with customers, and they told us how they use store, the customizations they made, what they'd like to see in the future. And the nice, the nice thing is, a lot, there was a lot of overlap between what they were doing. There was actually, when I was doing development for, for a customer of Syncoms, 
Um, I admit to come out of the same thing, so it was really good to see and get that information the first time written down, and now we can make those actionable items and we'll move forward on them. So we want to listen to what our customers are doing, and, and also a lot of the stuff, uh, Neil mentioned before dog food, and you know, we use it ourselves for, for building our products, so it's, it needs to work for us too. Object Studio. First, with Object Studio, I want to tell you about how we how we tell other people about it, how we tell non non small companies about it. And Object Studio is the business analyst slating tool. What does that mean? It means a business analyst can sit down with an architect and they can build out something in UML. They can generate a framework. They can go in and tweak things. Without you know, a lot of generators, once you generate something, if you change something in it and generate it again, you wipe that out. Not with this, you can kind of work at both ends with round trip engineering. Um, you saw just a glimpse of the tools yesterday, but those can let you get a lot done very quickly at a high business level. So uh, it's built on the same foundation that Visual Works is. It's Windows, Windows only. It's, I think, the only Windows 7 certified small talk, actually certified. Yeah, very capable product. And you saw the modeling and mapping tool yesterday. The, the, those are our, our key pieces of this that, uh, that make it unique and distinct. So what have we done in the past? We've moved it up to the latest foundation. Um, we moved the modeling and mapping tool uh, over and start, started to beef them up and bring them back up to speed for Office Studio 8 and then beef them up big time. Uh, some other, if you know, if you work on Windows platforms, you know what ASENs are. We move the message loop from C to small talk. And we've done a lot of this kind of this kind of thing in Object Studio, which gives us a little a little solve some has solved some issues and also gives the developer, now that the work's done in small talk, they have more visibility and more control over, over what's going on for their own customizations. And back then we were also the only Vista certified small talk in the past. Present, we are Windows 7 certified. We go over the latest foundation tools and improvements. Our mapping tool, we've started to make more utilization of Glorps capabilities, improve the integration with the modeling tool. Um, we've added something called a the debug tool, new installer that is talking with one of our engineers. Andreas, he thinks that this could even be used eventually by customers to deploy applications. It's, it's a robust tool, so you've got some ideas for that. We've improved the runtime packager uh, for use with Object Studio. Uh, cursor support for Oracle, Unicode support for databases, the Trippy Inspector is now, from, it's also used in Bitwords, is now the default inspector and all kinds of refinements and fixes, lots, lots of fixes going to each release. So where are we headed? Well, with Object Studio, like I mentioned, the modeling and mapping tool are kind of the headline feature items that really make this distinct and useful to a lot of people. So one of the things we're, we're, we're doing is continuing on with some very advanced capabilities uh, that Glorp has for inheritance mapping, conditional mapping, dictionary mapping, doing more things for modeling, improving the integer, interaction diagrammer, uh, refinements to our, our GUI builder, database performance improvements, and uh, see, right now we've, we've moved up to the, the, the latest build chain compilers for, for compiling our VMs. What we do things like this at the beginning of our cycles rather than at the end, so if there's any, you know, any, any hiccups, call it by something like that, we have more time to flush those things out, which is important for our QA. Visual works. The big difference with visual works is that it's cross platform. And this is how we talk to, especially to non small talkers about it. What is it? I mean, the first line is, it's what small talk's about, right? It's elegant, productive, and powerful. 
It's very interactive development. This, this whole live code interactive development, we need, we need to try to describe what, what we take for granted with, with the debugger and small talk. Um, it's really been the benchmark for object-oriented development. Uh, you know, we, we go after all kinds of databases, both relational and, and, and powerful object databases like, like Gemstone. And, and small talk is where unit testing came from. Small talk is all about innovation. We want to continue to innovate. And, and, and the community, the small talk community has continued to innovate over time. What else in the past? Foundation upgrades. Uh, one of the really big things, and again, this was a customer requested item, was you know, we've got these great applications, we, we sell to a certain market, now we want to sell these applications around the globe. Help us. And we heard that from a number of customers. So we went from some kind of custom built, we have like 14 different locales, we literally went from 14 to hundreds with a, a CLDR based internationalization <coughs> framework in our product. And we're continuing to refine and expand the capabilities of that. Our 64 bit platforms, I mentioned before, they, they had a major revamp. Uh, common revamp, make it much easier to use, and you kind of go through and discover things. It's, it's, it's pretty neat and useful. Common Active X is integrated. Uh, for both our products, you can see the, uh, the, the molecular logo. We've got new icons and logos. Things like a uh, new grid has been in preview. Some more really important customer driven ones are web services with Wistful and so. A number of customers said, we, we want you to support the latest, greatest protocols there. Uh, so we did that. We actually had to kind of, it, things have changed so much with the newer protocols, we kind of completely redo the, the, um, the builders and wizards. I mentioned store. Store, the original store, now basically been completely replaced. I just call here store two. So, you know, the store two improvements in both the products. We have something called the product launcher that if I have come I'll show you after. It always bothers me that when we install, we install these, these pretty icons like on, on the desktop, but nobody ever really used them. People would go to the directory where your images are and double click and that's how you get to your images. So it's kind of bothered me that we've wasted that icon. Really nice looking icon. Can we can we do something useful with that? So what this does now, if you click on that, that pretty molecular icon, it's something that, that I hope helps brand new people brand new to small talk and also helps people who have been using it for a long time. If you've been using it for a long time, you double and you click on that uh, project launcher, it brings up a list of all your basically all your images. And you can launch them all from there. So you don't have to go dig for the directory. Uh, for a new person coming to Smalltalk, I mean, one of the things that we get familiar with um, from using Smalltalk is, okay, you start up with a virgin image, you rename it, and that's how you can create a change log based on that on your project. Well, a, a new person coming and opening up this for the first time doesn't necessarily know that. And it may be some trial and error that they figure that out, because a lot of people don't bother reading the manuals. They think software should just work and be obvious. So this does, it does make it more obvious. You start the product launch, you can click on plus and name it, and basically it will create the image and name the image for you. So you don't have that, that awkwardness to people coming to small talk for the first time. So I'm really happy about that. Polycephaly is, is another project that is what happens when your engineers name it. And you might think it sounds like a disease, it's like, oh, it's got polycephaly, we're so sorry. <laughs> it's, it's actually a good thing. Um, and then it's gonna, I mentioned sometimes our customers ask for some things, sometimes you know, we try to innovate. And I basically put out a challenge to our engineers, I said, you know, multi-core computers are everywhere. What can we do that's small, hot, simple to get some concurrency for our customers out of those? Give me something that gives me 80% of the benefits, but only 20% of the pain. 
And I, I am really happy about what they've done for that. I was actually worried for a while, like we put it out, that I wasn't hearing much about it. But then the information started to come in. Basically, I wasn't hearing about it because people were adopting and using it, and it all worked. It just worked. So, oh yeah, we, we tripled our input, and our, our throughput on, on testing, and you know, they, they moved batch processes to this and got a lot higher throughput. Perfect. It's a really neat, really useful solution. We're doing a little more, more of that, too. Uh, we've got, uh, I mentioned with internationalization, we're continuing to refine and improve it. Uh, here's, here's a really big one. Windows 64 is in preview. And Windows, um, at, at home on my Windows machine, I use Windows 7 64. And I think for the first time, the Windows 64 bit platform is, is ready for prime time. To, to me, not in Vista, not in XP, too many things didn't run on it. Now just about everything runs on it. A lot of people are using it. A lot of people are asking us, hey, we want 64 bit, we want 64 bit on Windows. This took a little more work, took a little more time because the uh, Windows platform is, has a lot of significant differences from the, the Unix and Unix like platforms that represent most of the other ones that we do. So it took more time, but we've got a lot of people who are, are getting on board with Windows uh, 64. And that shifts with our current product. Here was an interesting thing we fixed. The window called the Windows Move Fix. And that is, if you took a window in VisualWorks and you grabbed the window and moved it around, you'd basically freeze things for that duration. That had to do with uh, some history and how things were built and how Windows operates, which most people never noticed. Most people made no difference. But if you know, if your if your software is running a nuclear reactor and you're running you're run, running a delay that says in three seconds, open up the cooling valve, and you've got, got some operator who's putting his feet up and, and decides to grab the window and say, woo, you know, for for a while. I hope things like that don't happen, but that would be a problem. So we fixed that. Lots of refinements and fixes in every release. So where are we going? We've got some neat things of, of what we're doing and where we're going. One of the things, as I mentioned, Martin is here. He'll be talking about the efforts to externalize encryption, a number of reasons for doing that. Yeah, it's actually been something that we planned for a long time, a few things have maybe bumped that up to want to do it uh, sooner rather than later. But one of the things that we'll do for you if you use that is you know, that there's a lot of uh, machine code encoded uh, encryption out there that's very, very fast because people do lots and lots of it. So we can utilize that. If you things in small talk, we can call out small talk outside of small talk when it's ben beneficial to do so. And this is one of those cases, best of both worlds. Store performance is one of the things we're going to be addressing. Again, Tom will be telling you more about that. Internet Protocol version 6, we've got customers who are telling us, as soon as you've got that, I want it. I want it right now. And this is kind of an interesting thing where, where, where I think what's going to happen is we're going to have a lot of customers sometime in the future calling us and say, we need that yesterday. So we're, we're getting ahead of the curve on, on getting this work rolling for our customers. Skins is a really, uh, really pretty interesting thing. You know, there's always been the kind of debate, it's like a Coke versus Pepsi over the years, like, what's better, native widgets or emulated widgets? And, and there's been a, a fierce, passionate debate about what's better. And in, in one sense, this kind of addresses that with a, with a different view, and in one sense gives you kind of the best of both worlds. What Skins is about is it gives you the customization ability of emulated widgets. So you, your widgets are written in small talk, and you, you can make them do anything. You can make them into a, a whistling teapot if you need to. You can make them do anything. You've got full control over them. That's good. But often there will be you know, slight differences between native rendering and, and, and how the, the emulated widget would be rendered. So what this does, what Skins does is actually use the native platform rendering for any of these widgets. So they absolutely look true. 
yet they're really customizable. So it was really an innovative solution that one of our engineers came across. It's a, a really innovative, great way to solve, to take a kind of a, 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 a fresh approach to this, this age-old question and problem. Fluid positioning, our, our GUI layout tool is going to get some improvements on fluid positioning that basically some modern techniques to, to and it's really neat the way it works. We'll probably have like a demonstration of that probably next year at next year's ESA. It's some pretty neat stuff. Windows 64 bit, we're going to do some stuff to better the installation of that and then we'll move to support it. And we will continue to make some little and soap refinements. I mentioned we listened to customers on, on the Whistle and Soap. One of the things was when we moved, when we moved to the modern protocols, there were some ways of using it that were basically outdated. And we, we, we talked to a number of our customers who are big uh, web services users and says, what are you guys doing? And basically that was a good question to ask because a lot of people were using the antiquated way of doing it. Because we're saying, do we get rid of this or do we need this? And our customer said, oh, we really need this. So we are supporting, even though it's kind of a non-standard way of doing it. <coughs> and this is the web services recommended, but we are also recommending or are also supporting the way our customers are using this because it's important to them, it's important to us. So what's coming in the future? Some things like better on redo, more refinements for, for delays, durations, um, database improvements, polycephaly will move to support it. A lot of people are using that now. It's, it's very stable, it's, it's good stuff. I highly recommend checking it out. We're going to build a polycephaly too, to kind of extend that notion and also be able to do grid computing. So rather than just using the cores on your machine, and kind of also with the same simple, powerful framework, add in other computers to you know, farm out a lot of this work, improve your throughput, get some simple, powerful concurrency going. We have we've been thinking about ways to improve our font framework, and a lot of that is going to be integrated with what we do for internationalization. Uh, we've been looking at some different frameworks for doing that. We may go to a more native approach. Um, so, so what's available native on the platform, work with those ways to get, you know, to get more font capabilities, uh, fonts that go from right to left, lots of, lots of advanced capabilities. We're going to be doing more with our, our DLLCC. Somebody came up to me yesterday and said, you know, DLLCC, while it's not perfect, it, it is really industrial strength stuff because you, you can multi threading, you can do callbacks, it does uh, auto, auto typing, it really does all the things you need to. Maybe not always as easy as we'd like it, but it's, it's still really a robust solution that you're able to get, you're able to get the work done. Uh, very recently, in, the, in uh, the last month, we had some, some feedback that people are, would like an SFTP, SCP solution. So if, if you're a customer interested in something like that, please, please let me know. I'm interested to hear from you. Um, a few years ago, we, we made some major revamping to our development process. We, Basically, every, every person in engineering read, read a book about lean development and agile development, and we discussed how we could best, you know, revamp our our development process to be more lean and agile. We made lots of changes, including um, semi-automated builds, automated testing. We add new tests all the time to better our our product builds and, and QA. Um, what we, we Bought some new machines, upgraded the, the, the uh, build chain, new compilers, etc. Uh, I mentioned one of the things we're going to be working on is adding configuration management for store. We are going to begin prototyping and using those things internally. I mentioned dog fooding, 
we want to you know, see what works and make sure that works before we you know, subject any of our, our customers to something like that. One of the things I've gotten feedback on is, you know, it, I mentioned we've had a lot of a lot of improvements and changes, and a lot of customers out there have very very specific customized code. Now I'm always sensitive to the fact that if you make improvements too fast, you know, even if they're fantastic things, even if they're fantastic things, your customer's going to have some work with all those custom custom bits that now are broken that they need to redo. So our, our next release, set of releases that comes out in the fall is going to kind of be a, a, a stabilization release, a dot release, and it's going to be in an online distribution or, or mail distribution. So it will be the media, but it will be basically that, that dot release, that ultra-stable version that people have told me they want. That's really, really important for them. And, and, and we hear that. And we're delivering that. It's pretty neat. We, we can do things like with Store. We can, we can put all those changes and integrate them into a, a SQLite repository, which is a file. And we can give you that file. And you can, you can mount it like a database in Store and just, and just suck all those things in. So we have a lot of different ways to deliver things like that. So we're going to integrate the fixes and deliver them as a, as a release. And this is kind of the direction for future releases in general. We're looking at, at some online notifications and updates, kind of the way Apple, Microsoft, Firefox, Chrome do things. You'll be notified, hey, here's some, here's some fixes. Here's some fixes that apply to you. Which, which ones do you want to install? And you can say, none at this time, or I want this, this, and this. Thank you. So you know about them sooner, and you can install them online for fixes. And then we'll still have major <coughs> things coming out, probably annually. Products Plus One, I mentioned, you're going to be hearing later about Channel Stream, <coughs> product built for another market, built in Syncom Smalltalk. We've also got an exciting one. We heard from a major corporation who basically has asked us to build, build something, and it's called the Orchestrator. And this takes a number of existing products and is actually using Object Studio to orchestrate the use and some, some new capabilities in, in this product of bringing all these things together and leveraging the abilities of Object Studio 8. We're really excited about that. Has some, some great stuff coming with it. So you might hear some more things about that on our, on our website in the future. So what's next? Well, people like like what Alan Kay, one of my favorite quotes by Alan Kay is the the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Well so to paraphrase Alan, the, the best way to predict what happens in, in Syncom small talk is to is to talk to us. I think because we, a lot of our stuff is all all customer driven. This is my email address. If you have any ideas, suggestions, problems, just want to talk. It was great about the product. What you don't like about the product? What we can do better? Please send me an email. How am I out of time? About out of time? Yes. Okay, out of time? Okay. I just want to mention a couple of it. Um, okay. I just want to leave a couple, a couple of closing thoughts. Small talk is, is healthy. Um, despite the really down economy, uh, Syncom and Small Talk is doing, is doing well. Um, we are very responsive to customer needs. One of the things we hear from customers is we wish there were more people, more developers who know Syncom Small Talk. 
So a couple things. If you're if you're a developer using our products, I'd like to invite you to join uh, VW Dev, which gets you and, and our our builds for our next release ahead of time and gives you a preview to up and coming things, so you can you can try them out, get us feedback, impact the development of them, um, and, and start to integrate them early. So you're so by the time it comes out, you're already ready to start using that if that's important to you. If you have have not used Syncom Smalltalk, I welcome you to download and just become familiar with it. And, and I'm not saying, you know, oh, you know, throw away what you're using and, and, and use our stuff. But no. I mean, Syncom is behind Smalltalk, and we'd like to see Smalltalk in general succeed. And there, there's room, there's room out there for open source small talks, commercial small talks, startup small talks, experimental stuff. Like, like with the, the red line stuff we saw yesterday. God bless them. I hope those guys are successful. We need to get more of the small talk message out there. We've got a lot, lot of them. What? So, so, so I'd, love it. I'd love it if every developer in here downloaded it and became familiar. So if people are looking for, for employees, that you can say, you know, yes, you're familiar and you have experience with our product. So if that's of interest to you, please, I invite you to try that out. Oh, but the different small talk, uh, like a description someone once gave me, they said, they said, all the different small talk dialogues are in a rowboat together. We can all row, row together and, and get small talk somewhere, or we can sit there and hit each other over the head with a paddle, which will only give us a headache. So we all row together. Out of time, and just one last thing, um, I think Neil's going to be handing and in these out, some Syncom flashlights. By the way, so if you're staying locally in the area, these are great to put up their little LED flashlights. You can put them on your bedside, you need to get up, so they knock on the door, you've got a little flashlight. Everybody, thank you very much. <laughs>